Want to talk about what's haunting you, or should we wait for a third act flashback? Uh, go f yourself. Remember when movies used to just want to entertain you? Yeah, I know, foreign concept. But as I've mentioned on the channel before, we are definitely emerging from the dark age of cinema. Starting with Top Gun Maverick, films and filmmakers began to have respect and deference towards their audiences. We got it with Killers of the Flower Moon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and even in the latest Fly Me to the Moon. Movies have begun to respect their audiences. The culmination of that respect seems to be Deadpool and Wolverine, a movie with so much fan service that it makes it seem as if the pendulum is swinging hard the other way. But is Deadpool and Wolverine really Marvel Jesus? And what did critics say about the film? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that is Disney's Marvel. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. As many of you already know, I was born in Argentina. I came here when I was eight and the way I learned to speak English was through cartoons and comic books. It started with my obsession with the 1987 cartoon version of the Ninja Turtles. At the time, Archie Comics adapted the cartoon into comic book form, the second iteration after the original Mirage books of the mid-80s. They had comic books with audio tapes so I could follow along, learning pronunciation and the contextual meaning of words. Saturday morning cartoons were all the rage back then, so after Ninja Turtles came Spider-Man, X-Men, and the short-lived Iron Man and Fantastic Four cartoons. I was all about it. I saw every episode and read and collected every comic series. To say that comics were a big part of my childhood would be an understatement. So when I sat down to watch Deadpool and Wolverine for the first time, all those wonderful memories began flooding back. I will preface right now that there will be mild and heavy spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the film yet, I encourage you to watch it and then come back to this video later. Alright, let's get into it. There's so many cameos, easter eggs, and fan service in this movie that it'll be difficult for me to talk about all of them in just this video. So I'll be making a series of videos this week to keep talking about how good this movie actually was. I think the best place to start would be the basic plot synopsis. So the movie begins with the TVA interrupting Wade Wilson's birthday party by kidnapping him back to TVA headquarters. Here it is explained to Deadpool that the death of Wolverine in the Logan movie set off a chain of events that was killing off his timeline. But the corrupt TVA agent, Mr. Paradox, offers Deadpool a way out and into the sacred timeline. Wade Wilson is clearly distraught when he realizes that he'd never see his friends and family again, so he sets off to find another Wolverine variant to replace Logan in his timeline. When this doesn't work, they're sent off to the void that we saw in the Loki TV series. Yeah, I know, that dredge. But actually, it's not that bad here. The film does a decent job of explaining what the Void and the TVA are by showing rather than telling the audience what it is. So if you haven't seen the Loki TV series, don't worry about it. This film stands well on its own in that regard. So in the Void, we're introduced to basically every single cameo, as well as the movie's main villain, Cassandra Nova, Charles Xavier's sister, who rules over the domain at the end of time. Together with all the cameo characters from all the Fox movies, Deadpool and Wolverine set out to save their timeline. That's basically the plot of the film. It's certainly not as convoluted as I expected it to be, and wasn't nearly as massive of a film as previews made it out to be. This isn't Avengers Endgame, but rather a pretty well-executed soft reboot. Now I'm just giddy and have to talk about all the cameos. First, let me get the obvious one out of the way. Taylor Swift was unfortunately not in this movie as Dazzler. But that's okay, maybe Marvel will bring her in down the line when her career inevitably shifts from music to films. The first few cameos we're treated to begin when Deadpool is going from timeline to timeline trying to find a Wolverine candidate to replace Logan. The one Wolverine variant that had me over the moon was the Age of Apocalypse timeline version of Wolverine called Weapon X. Now, for those of you who are too young to remember, Age of Apocalypse is a renowned X-Men storyline from the mid-90s that explores an alternate reality where Professor X is killed before forming the X-Men. In this dark timeline, 
Apocalypse rises to dominate the world with his philosophy of survival of the fittest. Magneto, taking up Xavier's dream, leads the X-Men in a desperate struggle against Apocalypse's oppressive regime. The series features altered versions of familiar characters like Weapon X, with some heroes and villains switching roles, and culminates in a climactic battle to restore the original timeline. The storyline was celebrated for its compelling what-if scenario and significant impact on the X-Men universe, so it was a really nice thing to see in this movie. And seeing Weapon X on screen elicited so much joy out of my inner child. We also see Henry Cavill as a variant of Wolverine, which served to quell rumors that he may be taking over from Hugh Jackman, and he does a phenomenal job so it would be nice to see in a future adaptation. The one glaring omission, or perhaps I just didn't notice, was a Doug Ray Scott variant. For those of you who don't know, Scottish actor Doug Ray Scott was originally picked to play Wolverine in the original X-Men movie back in 2000, but due to scheduling conflicts with Mission Impossible 2, he had to drop out and the rest is history with Hugh Jackman. It would have been nice to see that cameo, but I'm not too heartbroken about it. The other cameo which I absolutely didn't see coming and there had been no rumors or gossip about was Chris Evans. Up until the very second of the reveal, it seemed as if we were seeing a Captain America cameo, but just before saying Avengers Assemble, he screams flame on to reveal the Fox version of the Human Torch. This was a nice touch and an excellent callback to the 2005 adaptation of The Fantastic Four starring Chris Evans and Jessica Alba. The other cameos which were entirely unsuspected were Jennifer Garner's Elektra, Wesley Snipes' Blade, Daphne Keene's X-23, and perhaps my favorite bit of fan service in the entire movie, Channing Tatum as Gambit. We've already had one Gambit on screen, played by the tragically underrated Taylor Kitsch, way back in X-Men Origins Wolverine, but there were rumors and failed plans to bring in Channing Tatum to play the role of the Cajun Remy LeBeau. Channing Tatum lobbied hard for another X-Men Origins movie that sort of languished in development hell for the better part of a decade. So it was nice to finally see him in the role and get his comeuppance. The bit where Deadpool makes fun of his accent and asks who his voice coach was, was pretty hilarious too. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the elephant in the room. The film gives audiences a heavy-handed dose of mea culpa. In each act of the film, there is a funny yet serious address telling audiences, yeah, we know we fucked up since Endgame, but let us make it up to you. And make it up they did. The movie paid respect to the entirety of the Fox X-Men franchise throughout the film and during the credits showed scenes and bloopers from each of the films in the franchise to the tune of Green Day's Good Riddance, which was a pretty sweet send-off. From the very beginning of the film, the filmmakers sought to not only respect the Fox franchise, but also the source material. At no point did the film do anything disrespectful to the longtime fans in that way, let's say like the Acolyte did to Star Wars. In fact, this is like the polar opposite of the Acolyte. There's no subverting of expectations, no fucking with the source material, and no insertion of any progressive agenda. In fact, in a few quips and one-liners, Deadpool does make fun of wokeness, DEI, and other isms that have littered Disney's productions in the past few years. Overall, the film acts as a soft reboot for Marvel, but not in the way that soft reboots have been done before. This isn't Twisters and Twister. Deadpool and Wolverine serves as not only an apology to fans of both franchises, but also serves to respect what came before, the source material, the Fox franchise, and the fandom. It never outright admits that the fandom menace was right, and it never addresses YouTubers like myself, Critical Drinker, and Nerd Roddick by name, but it certainly addresses almost all of our criticisms. The question is, where will Disney's Marvel go from here? Will we see a return to form with next year's Captain America New World Order? Or will it be more of the same woke nonsense that's plagued the MCU since Endgame? The Captain America 4 trailer, to me, looked more like a return to form with the political spy thriller feel of Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Only time will tell. 
But what do you guys think? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.